Okay, thanks very much for giving me the opportunity to present our experiences on student mobility at UBD. So first of all, I'd like to set the context. UBD is a small national university and very young. So we have no choice but to look outside to work with similar kinds of people. There is no other medical school or dental school. This is our institute, uh, very close to the South China Sea. And those of you who visited in 2019, we hosted the, uh, the, this ASEAN D Medical Summit uh, here. And it was great to see you all. And it's a shame that we haven't met for two years because I think it is important to get to know each other personally for these relationships to really thrive. So again, in terms of the student mobility, we offer four-year programmes and we offer twinning programmes. So we don't do the full medicine and dentistry. We send them to partner medical school and partner dental schools. But the other programmes we do the full, full time here. And of those four-year courses, three years are on campus and one year, one year is off campus. It's experiential learning. So this is credit mobility and I'll come back to that. The other thing that is very noteworthy is that unfortunately Brunei has experienced a second wave of the Delta variant and it spread very, very quickly in the last two or three weeks. So we have very rapidly mobilised um, many of our students and staff to run a vaccination centre. And I'm proud to say that we've been running for two weeks and we can vaccinate upwards of um, a thousand people a day. So contributing to getting over the problem. So again, more context setting. So being a small university in a small country, it's very, very important to work with external partners. So we have many partners in many countries and we take these and we, we are a part of a number of consortia which the university takes very seriously. So all our students have the opportunity to spend at least one semester overseas and we very strongly encourage it. You can see that mostly they go to the region but they go all over the world. The kind of things that they do there, they can take study abroad, which is very traditional. They can be more flexible and do an internship, which is basically following somebody doing their job. Could be a research lab, could be a clinical environment, could be many things. They do community outreach programs, for example, teaching English as a foreign language in Vietnam or Thailand or other places, whatever. Uh, and they can do kind of incubation or entrepreneurial type of projects. So I know this is an example of them building a race car for a competition. Um, obviously, with any kind of mobility agreement with another university, there needs to be a reciprocity. So if you send students out, you want to receive them back as well. So again, we are part of a number of student exchange programmes. We offer a global discovery programme. Our global affairs are very, very good and they will offer bespoke programmes should you be interested. And again, like many others, we offer research internship programmes. I think there are currently at least four people who could not go back to their international university and are in Brunei because of the travel restrictions and they're doing research in our faculty. Whether they can access the labs at the moment is a different thing. So going back to our full four year programmes and to tell you a bit more detail about the credit mobility. So we have this discovery year, which is two semesters and we really are target. We really target as many as possible to go overseas, at least for one semester. So much so that I am summoned to the university to explain if there's less than 80%. I have to go with them through the students one by one to say why they really won't go overseas. And there's a lot of support. So the funding is a co-funding model. And this is the data from the last four years. So you can see that we nearly get there and last year we should have got there, but unfortunately uh, they had to be diverted. So back in March, 2020, as the pandemic hit, we received back wave upon wave of student, depending where the pandemic was in the region. So we received them back from Japan, Malaysia, Thailand, etc. It was very difficult. In 2020, 2021, like many other countries, our borders are more restricted and we diverted all, all of the discovery year to be local or online. We could still send students overseas, so we still sent them to our partner medical schools and partner dental schools that we could. In 2021, 22, um, 
all of the students are mobilised now to the Ministry of Health, and in particular, they're helping the UBD vaccination centre. So some of the students are vaccinating, some of them are withdrawing the vaccine, and but many of them from other programmes will be ushering um, and helping with the logistics. So that's, uh, you know, more than a thousand students mobilised at short notice. So what about medicine? So we have two kinds of uh, mobility. We have non-credit mobility and we have obviously designed into the programmes degree mobility. In terms of the non-credit mobility, we encourage our students to go overseas and we've had a collaboration with the University of Kagawa for many, many years based on, again, on personal friendships. So we send students out in winter and we accept students back in for a four week programme during the summer. So we've been running these programmes from 2005 to 2019. Obviously, 2020 and 2021 have been postponed. Our students also take the opportunity to do a four week programme in Kota Kinabalu to supplement their learning if they would like to do kind of voluntary additional anatomy using cadavers. And they, they uh, up until recently, were going every year. So they get no credit for this, but it's still very beneficial. In terms of the degree mobility, our students do their first part of the degree here. They get the Bachelor of Health Sciences in Medicine or Dentistry. And then we have places at partner medical schools and partner dental schools. So this is just a snapshot of our partners, the numbers of students we sent and the years that we've sent them. So um, the thing that may be obvious to you is it's very difficult to send any student to Australia because of their border closure for international students. So we have sent nobody in 2020 or 2021. It also tells you that you need diversity in your partners because you get different practices around the world. So although we have three partner medical schools in Australia, because we have enough in Australia, in, in UK and Ireland, we are resilient to the problems there and we could send, you know, we could send the whole cohort elsewhere. So obviously I had to go and have a look a bit at the research, you know, and I, I don't find a massive literature on student mobility, but I did find some, it tended to be a bit UK centric. And certainly from the UBD perspective, we are very inclusive in that we really encourage everybody to go. And if they do, if they have a higher CGPA, they get more funding. So the bright ones will be funded to go. So then the questions would be things like, you know, why do they go? Will they return? Now, this is very important for governments who sponsor students to go overseas. And that was the practice in UBD, uh, sorry, in Brunei, to be honest. Um, bright students would be sent overseas, mainly to the UK to do their A-levels. They would get into universities, they'd do their medical programme, uh, and then they'd do their postgraduate training, and then maybe return. They might have been out of the country for 15, 20 years even. So obviously, these are very important years, 16 to you know, 25, 30, some of them get married, some of them don't come back. And in fact, I know that the Ministry of um, Education Scholarship Unit, the, the most outstanding students are the medics and dentists that, don't, that they have to chase to come back or pay back their bond. So obviously people think, well, obviously mobility is a good thing. Why is that? I mean, I think that the more experiences you have, the greater your human capital and the benefits to you wherever you work. So as universities, we want to lever on our academic networks, partnerships and exchanges to benefit and provide advantage for our student learning. So obviously that's me telling you the context. It's much more interesting if I can tell you what our students think. So I did a very quick and dirty feedback because this, you know, the world is connected. We are a global community. I'm still in touch with all the students I've met since joining UBD back in 2012. So this is where they are. So there's some of them are registrar level, they're senior house officers, house officers, they're still in medical school overseas, or they're even just before they've left. So I asked them three questions. Why did you go? What did you gain? And how were the resources and support systems? So I did a very quick kind of nominal group technique. So the number of times that I saw the same point, they became the top points. And then the other points that were made by these various cohorts of students. So for why, this seems to be fairly similar to what people tell me, to say from the literature as well. The top three points, different cultures, 
um, something about independence. And then they wanted to experience how medicine was taught in a different country. Other things that came up was about friendships, extracurricular activities, and the reason they chose to go to certain places was because of the reputation. Far more kind of feedback was around what did they gain. They were quite uh, forthcoming. So it's the same thing. I looked at all the points, ranked them, and the top three things that really came out was new knowledge. You know, I mentioned cadavers. Lifelong friends, support. And then something around how you approach things, how, you know, how you approach medical education, being more adaptable, changing the way that you think. Um, other points that different people made were around personal development, enrichment, exploring different countries and cultures, seeing how health systems work, um, good facilities. And one of the more senior doctors mentioned how it had been a benefit in her postgraduate interviews to be able to talk about the time that she was in Kagawa or, you know, transferring to a partner medical school. Okay. But, you know, and then in terms of the resources, luckily they were quite positive and they more or less said all the same thing. So something about the staff at UBD, the staff in the partner like Kagawa, something around the care and um, peer, peer support, seniors, and then uh, materials. So nothing really too unexpected there, but at least they were good enough. But much more interesting if I let them talk for themselves. So this is Rachel. Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Lai and I'm currently one of the medical middle grades in the East Midlands in the UK. So in the first year, for example, I've had the chance to join a lot of different programs, particularly the Kagawa Winter Program, which at that time gave me the opportunity to take part in dissections firsthand, as this was not offered in my university curriculum. So that was a good way to learn anatomy and at the same time make new friends and experience firsthand the different type of healthcare services that's available uh, in Asia and, that's, and compare it to Brunei. So this was all very useful and I think what this is um, Eru. Then I went to uh, Kagawa Winter Medical School in December 2014 and finally I went to my uh, partner medical school in the University of Ireland Galway in 2016. So what motivated me to go to Kagawa in Japan is because of friend, uh, friendship and also I want to experience uh, different types of cultures there. And I chose Galway as my partner medical school because uh, initially I was um, hearing people saying, oh, people are very good there, very friendly, and which is true. I never regret this decision and again, lots of friendship over there. And what I got lots of support from my friends and lecturers over there overall. Um, with resources are really good as well because um, I'm able to access a variety of uh, online resources which make my study uh, and research as more uh, easier. Thank you so much. Hey, who's just graduated and she's just started my her first top thought job on student mobility at the University of Brunei Darussalam is that it is definitely widely encouraged. The structure of the course almost demands it really um, because we spend three years in UBD and then three years in our partner medical school and the whole process really just encourages students to adapt and grow. Um, I'm really grateful for all the opportunities that I've had while attending UBD from being able to go to exchange programs in Japan, attending anatomy courses in Malaysia and having the opportunity to present in conferences in Hong Kong and Malaysia. Um, and then finally, moving to the United Kingdom for my clinical years. In all honesty, when I look back, I can't believe I did all those things in three short years. And I don't think I would have had such a diverse range of experiences if I hadn't attended UBD, because the staff had always encouraged us to put ourselves outside our comfort zones and have been so supportive of us while we go through these experiences. Um, I've learned a lot about myself through these opportunities and about medicine and about other cultures. And I'd like to think my outlook on life and personal beliefs have been made better by it as well. So um, 
I think the thing that really strikes me is just how what uh, what great people these these students have become. They're very positive. They're resilient. And I'm sure that they have got greater independence, maturity and personal development and a broader experiences. From our point, we want to collaborate with as many different people to get as many different, you know, high quality clinical skills training that they can from different parts of the world. So I think a lot of benefits for student mobility. Obviously, you know, the pandemic and the new normal has decreased opportunities. Um, it's difficult to maintain good relationships and it's very important to work with our partners on you know, networks and to develop agreements to give benefit to our students. And I guess the other thing is about you know, resources. There's a lot of money um, for some of these activities and then how we can co-fund and uh, be fair to give equal opportunity. So I'm gonna leave the last words to Rachel. It's been a difficult time to say the least but I would say is, you know, we're all here to serve our community, regardless of where you are. So don't ever disregard your contributions, regardless where you are in your training. So I wish you all the best.